Hi guys, welcome to the second part of 2.3. So at this point, you should have read the whole entire story, answered all the questions in the side margins. There were eight questions that will be on the quiz on Flickr, so make sure you know what they are. You should have annotated the text using your metacognitive markers. Then you have the after reading section, number five below. It says complete the chart. You are going to be pulling evidence from the text. So the first piece says, what ideal is the society based on? You're putting your interpretation and then your evidence, please draw quotes in there. So you have four boxes, which means you're pulling one, two, three, four quotes from the text. Section B says, what did the society sacrifice in order to create this ideal life? Your interpretation, you need something from the text. So you gotta pull a quote out. C, how was this utopian ideal transformed into a dystopian reality? your interpretation, and then you're pulling something from the text. What new problems were created? Your interpretation, and then again, something from the text for evidence. After this, we have a piece that is going to teach us how to put embedded quotations in our writing correctly. So it says, after writing the controlling idea, which is the thesis for a paragraph or essay, the writer needs to develop additional ideas to support the thesis. The writer does this by providing specific evidence such as paraphrased and or direct quotations and insightful analysis or explanation. So you need to pull out a quotation and put your opinion after it. On your opinion, you're using those power verbs, this piece of paper that is in the front of your notebook as you're backing it up. So direct quotations, it says, review the following information about using direct quotations in your writing. Remember to avoid plagiarism by paraphrasing or directly quoting evidence. Although it is often easier to paraphrase information, a direct quotation can strengthen ideas if it is selected carefully and embedded smoothly. In order to smoothly embed a direct quotation, just remember the TLQC format, transition, lead-in, quotation, citation. This was on activity 1.15, page 76. Here's an example of what this should look like. It says, the reader is stunned by Harrison's dramatic death scene, yet Harrison's parents hardly react. When George realizes Hazel has been crying, he simply says, forget sad things. And then we have the author's last name, the page number with a period at the end. So this is what your quotations should look like when they are embedded correctly. Next, how to use ellipses and brackets. These will help you include more without writing out long pieces of quoted material. Study how the quoted material below has been added smoothly with the use of ellipses says, Harrison tore the straps of his handicap harness like wet tissue paper. Tore straps guaranteed to support 5,000 pounds. Harrison's scrap iron handicaps crashed to the floor. So now if they just take out the important pieces and they use the ellipses here, it should sound like this. The reader celebrates the moment when, so they're using a lead-in, Harrison tore the straps of his handicap harness like wet tissue paper, ellipses, and scrap iron handicaps crashed to the floor, allowing him full freedom at last. Here's the author's last name, the page number, the period goes at the end. So they have the lead-in, the quote, ellipsis, and then they have um, a comma finishing the thought, the author's last name, the page number, and then the period. So you want to be using this in your writing. Then you have language and writer's craft with active and passive voice. Active voice is, for example, when he says, Harrison removed his handicaps. Passive voice, the handicaps were removed by Harrison. You generally use active voice because it puts the emphasis on who or what is performing the action of the verb rather than on the verb itself. The passive voice contains some form of be, like is, was, were, uh, being, has been, etc., plus a past participle of the verb. So you want to make sure that you're trying to be an active voice. Um, I Generally, I'm not going to grade you too harshly on this, but you want to try to be in this active voice, and you will see that as comments on your papers sometimes. So it says, most importantly, do not mix active and passive constructions in the same sentence. So the handicapper general approved the new handicaps, and a new amendment was added. It should be recast as or rewritten as. The handicapper general approved the new handicap and added the new amendment. This one is better, the second one. So just be thinking about that when you're writing and your verb tense. So next it says, how does Harrison Bergen convey the conflict between the needs or ideals of society and realities of individuals? Be sure to 
provide examples from the text, and use at least one direct quotation to support your ideas, include a reference to a utopian dystopia, use active voice unless you choose passive voice for a certain effect. So for this assignment, you will need to write three paragraphs on the class blog or in your composition notebook, comparing and contrasting using feature by feature or subject by subject formatting to convey the conflict between the needs or ideals of society and the reality of individuals. So think about what society needs, what individuals need, and why those things can't really be controlled because we would then be led into a dystopian society. Use quotes from the text. So you need to pull out quotes with commentary and then use your power verbs from the list that I gave you. So you're using this list. You need to include dystopian and a utopia. Use active voice. So try to use all of these things in your writing. You will have um, 30 minutes to write this. If you need more time, I can give you more time afterwards, but it is three paragraphs long.